to take a minute and map out a persuasive speech for you. A very basic look at a persuasive speech. This stuff can get very complex very quickly, but we're going to keep it nice and simple. Just underneath the surface, get us something that we can use immediately. So let's dive in. One of the first things we want to do on any presentation, no matter what the goal is, is to always consider what the audience thinks, does, feels. Always, we want to think, what do we want them to think? What do we want them to do? What do we want them to feel? Not just overall, but at each stage of the process. So always be keeping these in mind and your ultimate goal. Don't lose track of that. Now, from the very beginning, in our introduction, we want to accomplish a few different things. One, we want to establish our ethos, our credibility, our character, our likability. There are a number of ways to do this. Simply appearing confident can establish your ethos. Being prepared and ready to go gives the audience a sense that you're a pro. You know what you're doing, and you're not here to waste any of their time. Now, along with ethos, we also want to establish the relevance. How is our topic relevant to their lives specifically? They want to know, and if they don't see it, they won't care about anything you have to say. So let them know explicitly how this affects their lives. Optional for the intro, depending on your topic, you'll want to address any opposition or resistance to your topic. If you're here to persuade people of anything, there's always going to be some resistance. This doesn't have to be, I completely disagree with where you're coming from or your positions, or policy proposals. It can be something as simple as, look, I'm pretty busy, so I just don't have the time. Show that you understand their concern, that you empathize with that concern, and that you're going to offer a better path forward. Now, once we have all of this figured out, we're ready to transition to the body. Introductions. Consider what we want them to think, do, and feel. Keep your goal in mind. Establish your ethos. Act confident. Be ready to go. Look like you know what you're talking about. Smile. Establish the topic's relevance to this specific audience. Grab their attention through a surprise, shock, twist. And at least... Let them know that you have considered their resistance, that you can appreciate it, and that you're going to have an answer for it. This first transition, especially, is very important to lay out. It establishes the flow for the rest of the speech, and if you want everything to go smoothly, hammer out this first transition. Your points can't just magically appear. We need to be led from one to the next. Here's a wall. Now we see the wall. Coming up next is the lake. So let's talk about the lake. No transition there. Here's a wall. Now if we walk along it here, we're going to go about another 18 feet. And as we get to the end of the wall, now we can see the lake. So at the lake, and so on, we need movement going from one point from the intro to our next point, the first point in the body. Don't just spring it on us. This needs to be something good. Don't save your best evidence for the middle section of the speech. You want your absolute best points first and or last. The audience is more likely to remember the first things you said and the last things you said. So make those the best, your strongest arguments, first and last. As you establish these main points, you're going to be making claims or assertions, and those claims and assertions will need to be evidenced. You'll need to prove them somehow, because we're not just taking your word for it. You'll need to prove it to us. So once you make a claim or an assertion, back that claim or assertion with evidence. And no matter who the audience is, you're going to have a couple different basic types of evidence. You are always going to have analytical people and emotional people. Obviously, all people are both of these things to varying degrees, but you can rest assured that some people in that crowd are more analytical and some are more emotional. Make sure you cover both. How? Analytical evidence is going to be mostly stats, facts, figures, experiments, 
data. Then you're going to compound this evidence with an emotional appeal that you can take all of this information and make it visible, felt, through story or an anecdote or example. Take this data, stats, figures, and make it real for us. Make it tangible. Let us feel it, see it. How does it react in real life? We don't make relationships with numbers, stats, and figures. The relationship, the connection comes in our ability to see those stats, figures, and numbers in our own lives, how they play out in reality. So show us. These examples, stories, and anecdotes almost always work best when they are real. Real people, real faces, real names. If you leave it amorphous, it's harder to make that connection. There's some dogs down at the Fuzzy Friends Rescue right now, and they'd really like for you to adopt them. That is amorphous. It's hard to grasp. It's not tangible. There's a one-year-old schnoodle, a schnauzer poodle mix down at the Fuzzy Friends Rescue. It's about eight miles down the road right here. Her name is Lola. She's the sweetest thing you've ever laid eyes on. And she doesn't need you to adopt her right now, but she would sure like a belly rub, and they're offering for free for you to come down there and rub her belly today. Make it specific. Make it real. Help us establish that connection. And once we've established this, we're ready for main point two. And as always, when we're going from one thing to the next, we need a clear transition. Once you get to this second main point, you can repeat the style by making a claim or assertion and backing that claim with evidence of the analytical and the emotional variety. And you'll continue to do this for as many points as you've got. But if you include more than seven points, we're probably not going to take it all in. Limit your subject. Make it easy on our brains. You only have this much time. You can't include it all. If you actually wanted them to remember all of this, is that a reasonable assumption given the number of points you have? If not, limit those points. Once we have our points and our evidence, we will again transition to the conclusion. And in the conclusion, we are going to establish several important key takeaways for the audience. We will again establish the relevance to the audience's lives. We can provide them an easy to understand and remember summary of what was said and include a direct or indirect close or call to action. This is going to be the biggest difference between a persuasive speech and an informative speech is the informative speech not necessary for a call to action. Persuasive speech absolutely necessary to include a call to action. Tell the audience what you want them to do. This is a direct close. Buy my product. Visit my webpage. Vote for me. Direct close. Indirect close simply reminds the audience that they will continue to suffer until they implement my solution. You will continue to be broke, unhappy, and directionless in your life until you do whatever my solution is. You can combine the two. You will continue to be broke, disillusioned, directionless in your life until you buy this product. So buy it today. Indirect and direct close combined for a strong call to action. So take a look at what we've mapped out here and give this a shot with your specific topic. Having this detailed plan can make things simpler for you, lessen your anxiety, make it very easy for the audience to follow along, and take action on your ideas. Till next time.